Welcome back. So now we have a static list, or sorry, a dynamic list that can just show simple strings, but that's not normally what we want. But actually, let's just have a talk about <clears throat> type safety before we continue. Now, one of the cool things about TypeScript is that we can make it type safe, pretty much meaning that we can explain specifically what we're working with right now. So that's really, really powerful. So, so for instance, instead of just saying this is going to be a list of strings, what I could do is actually make it type safe, safe by adding a small colon right here and explain this list of strings, uh, sorry, this list needs to be a string array specifically, right? So now that I have explained to the system that this needs to be a string array, I cannot just put anything else in there. So for instance, I couldn't put an int in there. That's not allowed anymore. You could actually do this in JavaScript. Um, instead of just adding strings right here, you can now just add ints. So I have to actually now add strings inside my array or else it wouldn't be allowed. Now, the reason that I'm showing you guys this is because we're going to start working with objects. And an object is simply just two curly brackets like I've just written right here. And you can start just putting information inside an object. And that's how you make objects both in JavaScript and also in um, the actual TypeScript code right here. So again, that's not allowed right now because I'm explaining that this should be a string array. So you cannot put in an object here as well. But type safety makes it so that we can start defining objects and start using objects inside our code. And that's pretty powerful. So let's just get rid of this again and just save this and see it's still running um, so that we still have our code as, as a running system right now with this new type safe setup with the string array. Perfect, everything is still running so no problems there. What I wanna do next is I wanna start using customers. I wanna start creating my first real class, my first real object, which we are going to use later from our REST API. But for now we're going to create a customer object and start using that object inside our code here and we're going to use type safety for that. So now let's create our first real business object which is going to be a customer. But before we do, I just wanna make a bit of structuring inside my code. I wanna add first a folder under the app called um, a directory called shared. Now in that directory, I wanna have all the information that's going to be shared among different components and among different modules. So this is going to be kind of a, a place where I wanna place the code that multiple components can use. And we'll get back to services soon, but then we'll start making a lot of sense to have a shared folder that multiple different areas can use together. And under that guy, we're going to add another directory, and I'm just going to call that the model. So that's going to contain all my different business objects. In this case, I wanna create my first business object called customer. And um, let's just put that in here, customer.ts, and let's just say okay, um, there we go. Remember, by the way, you have, if you if you make a new file like this, it's very important you add the .ts in the end, or else it won't actually recognize it properly as a TypeScript file. So remember that .ts in the end, or you start getting some crazy exceptions or errors inside your code. There we go. So now we have this first customer file right here, and we wanna start adding some information to that one. And the way we create a class is actually pretty simple. We are going to first write export to kind of explain that we wanna export this class so others can use it. We're going to call it class because it's a class and then we're going to give it a name and use the uppercase customer right here. There we go. So now we have our class available and we're going to start adding some properties to this class. And I know from my backend what a, what a customer should have as properties. And let's just have a look at what we, we have in here. We have an ID and the ID is going to be an integer value. So let's just put in an ID of number, because we're using number in TypeScript instead of integer. We have um, a first name and we have a last name, which are both, both strings. So let's put in a first name and a last name. And again, I'm trying to use the same camel casing as I'm using inside my, um, inside my REST API. Last name, there we go, string as well. And then the final thing is an address. So let's just add that as well, just to have the same setup. Now for now, I'm not going to add any relation inside my models. We'll get back to relations later. So for now, it's just a simple customer object right here. Very basic stuff. Now, if you have something else, if you have a pet, that's just the pet properties you need in there. If you have a product, the product properties you have in here, it's up to you what your model should contain. Now, the next thing I wanna do is actually start creating real models inside my array instead of strings. So this is where I show you the first time the uses of type safety right here. Now I'm explaining to the system that this specific array is going to be an array of customers, right? So I'm going to explain to the system that I'm going to have a list of customers right here. Now when I actually add the customer, I need to import it. So I use Alt-Enter, 
uh, to actually do an import and then I'll, I'll, it'll automatically add a using statement in the top of my class right here. Then I'll try and create my first customer in here and you do that again just by adding the curly brackets to explain to the system I'm going to have a customer object right here and the customer object is going to have an ID, a first name and a last name and all the property has, pr properties I just defined I'm going to just add those in here and actually now I'm going to set them using the colon I'm going to set them to a specific value first name is John, last name is Johnson and then I'm going to add an address as well which is just going to be something home or something like that it really doesn't matter right now now you should notice that <clears throat> we get a few exceptions in here but they're actually TSLint issues that I'm missing a space if you mouse over you can see it's TSLint so it's actually not an exception that can run the code it's just a warning a message telling me that I should add a space right there and right there there we go so now everything looks fine and this is actually how you define an object inside TypeScript and <clears throat> We'll dive into it later, but you cannot define an object like that without the right properties. So let's just try and have a look at how we can actually also, we'll just come this out for now. Let's just remove it. I'll get back to that later. So now that this function is cleaned up, let's try and jump into our actual HTML right here to just see uh, how the code looks right now. And we still just use items and item and we haven't changed anything in here yet. Let's have a look at how that actually looks in, in the actual browser right now because you'll notice that I'm actually showing something called object object right now. Of course that's not what I want. I want to start using the real properties but before we do that let's just make a small clone uh, cleanup of our code because instead of calling it items which is just it's a bad property name now because it's not a list of items it's actually a list of customers. Let's just change that into customers here um, so that we can actually use some good naming conventions. There we go, customers. And then of course when I name this customers, you also have to rename it inside the HTML to also be called customers. And since we are changing this, let's also change the name item here into actually being a single customer. Again, I, I just want you guys to get this naming under, uh, under, the, under the skin so you guys understand that we have a list of customers and a single customer. For each of the customers in the list, we have a single customer. And let's just put that in here. And now we can actually start using the properties for each customer. And instead of showing just the customer as an object, we're going to use his first name. There we go. And then we are going to check it this out. And now you can see it's actually John instead of object object. So the reason that it actually showed object object here before is because a customer is actually an object. But a customer dot um, first name is actually John, right? So that's that's how you kind of start working with the properties of a specific item. So now we have our first customer available. We have a full object right here added to the list. And let's just two line this so we can add another customer right here. I'm just going to copy paste and add a second customer. He has ID two, we're going to call him Bill Bilson. And let's just put him somewhere else. So he's not home, he is uh, at work. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, and let's just save this. And let's have a look and now we have two customers just their first name again right so that's how simple it is to actually start working with real objects inside our HTML now this is needed because we're going to start getting real objects from the back end at some point now we can also add the customer's last name in our code if we want to let's just try and add a double curly bracket right here in the end as well and just add his last name as well just to show you guys that as well there we go and let's jump back and actually see this now it's Bill Bilson and John Johnson they're now available there we go. How, that's how simple it actually is to start working with actual objects. Now the final thing I want to do is just add down here the push event again so we can start actually put it, pushing new customers to our list using the push. And again it's the same as we did with inside our actual uh, string but now it's just a bit more complex objects that we're using. So that's why we have to actually add the curly brackets and create a real customer right here. So the customer is now created. Let's try and see if we actually can add new customers when we push now. There we go. Now the new guy, guy pops up as well and we can just keep clicking just like we could before. But the difference is now instead of just a basic string, we have type safety to a customer now and we actually have a real customer object, meaning that later on we can actually start adding real customer objects to our backend and actually retrieving real customer objects from our backend or whatever you guys are working with, any domain model, you can actually start working with that. So that's it for models inside our system and type safety. See you next time. Have fun.